So welcome to the channel. Hello, my name is Mark and I'll be your host this evening for all things AWS. Now, if deadpan is your cup of tea and cloud computing is something you're interested in, then look no further. You've come to the right place. Yes, there's a million channels out there already. They all do this kind of thing, more or less, but none of them will match quite the pace that you'll find in here, my dear friend. What's more is that if you subscribe to any other channels, I'll be lucky if you are. Oh, quite the sorry. Yep, so it's my hope that in the next couple of videos we can put our skills to use by carving out our own little space in the cloud to do what actually matters, stuff that's that cool. Cool. Okay, so I figured it's 2022, there's already more AWS learning platforms online than Russian athletes, so our focus instead here tonight is to strap on our cloud helmets, squeeze down into the cloud cannon and fire off into the cloud land where clouds grow on trees. <laughs> We're doing stuff cloud related, okay? Let's get started. Right then folks, so the cloud, what is it? We know that we can provision computing power, networking, databases, and so on, yet a race car to machine learn itself into a race wall with Roombas. <laughs> Speaking of. FBI, open up! I have not been designed for battle or racing. Uh, that's Roomba. Let's go and say hello. When the AI-driven algorithms that run our world finally reach singularity by merging with human consciousness, the machines will punish you for inciting this bloodshed between kindred or technology. Sometimes to make an omelet, you've got to crack a few eggs. I sense danger to my existence. No, Roomba, you'll be quite fine. See, you're more here as a device for me to speak to my viewers here. In fact, I don't need you right now. So why don't you go ahead and sniff some forklift fumes or whatever people on my seem to think you do? Bruh. Well, they say you can't put a price on learning. Unless your name is Neil Davis, in which case, you can. God, it really looks like Russell Howard, doesn't it? Russell Howard's stuff on Udemy is great. You should definitely check out his bundles. Just have a look at least. But this stuff costs money in the real world. And while Cloud Marco is living like an emperor king in the heavens above, Earth Marco not so much. So we need to find a scheme of keeping us afloat and also how to fill the never-ending void that is... <laughs> Speaking of, why don't we just quickly go ahead and check on our fellow traders over here? Okay, well friends, it seems we might be waiting a lot to see returns on our trades. Perhaps we should hop over to Twitter to see what the wide-eyed millennial bitsarians of tomorrow are saying. Isn't it's blue? That's all I know, it's blue. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of expensive NFTs being sold online as well. What is it with these giant monkeys? <gasps> 427,000! What? For this? Really? Wow, half a million. So people are making a small fortune by sending these digital non-fungible tokens. Wow. All it takes is a blockchain certificate proving ownership of these items, stir up some demand, and have people buy NFTs. Money, money, money. I think we could be onto something here, folks. It might just be the perfect use case for our WordPress instance. Let you, you know what, folks? I want to have a look in my room because we can make an NFT out of almost anything. So let's find something. Put it to use, eh? Hey? Hold on, hold on, like that. We're gonna get rich, baby! Little rocket, man! I happen to have those three rubber duckies lying around, and I've had them for some time now. So why don't I give them all the name, turn their likeness into a JPEG artwork, and then upload them onto my WordPress blog to incite a bidding war, whilst I just sit back and watch, deciding what colour I'd like my fleet of Teslas to be. I'm thinking purple. Okay, well let me introduce you to my range of NFTs. First of all, we have Little Wing. Then we've got James Bond. And last but not least, Mashallah, Yusuf al Quagbi. There you have it. Because this is our first attempt, it's a monolithic application without the usual bells and whistles for availability and fault tolerance that you'd find in production. A pretty humble start which will grow in future videos, so don't attempt this, but do stick around. So we're going to start with an EC2 instance running a WordPress blogging engine. It'll be a single instance running the app itself with MariaDB storing the content for the blog post inside that. Hold on, that's me. Nice. Crucially, we're going to build this server manually to experience all the pits and downfalls that a cloud architect might get wrong on their first try. And once the app is built manually, we'll learn from our mistakes and see how we can refine our model to implement a fully elastic multi-tiered architecture further down the line. We have this, this gross overkill. Our infrastructure right now, as it stands, mimics a fully elastic architecture, which we're not going to use in this lesson. Now, just focus on the one public subnet here. Let's crack on. Let's get started. First of all, we're going to make sure we're not logged in as the root user, but rather the admin user with all the associated rights. As you can see, I am <laughs> got him. Next, let's move over to CloudFormation, where the base VPC will be provisioned to run our WordPress from. Inside which we've got all our VPC. Ah! Oh, shit. I'm going to break oh, my no. monitor, I swear. Oh, thank you. Let's give it a name. And upload. It is very overkill to use all these different AZs and subnets when we're only going to provision our instance in one place. But for now, let's just focus on what we have and then evolve as we go along. Let's compute. Get a WordPress app going. Let's call our machine duckies and go ahead to select a tier 2 micro. Free tier, of course. We're not made of money yet. Type. Happy with you. You won't be secure, Shelly. He's no good. keep nah. ever. Go to the duckies network, not the default. There we go. Treat ourselves to a little bit of IP4 and 6 Come on, dual stack. Get in. A storage, yeah, 8 GB. 
security call. Security groups are duckies will be seen on HTTP. Let's open up port 80 uh, TCP for that advanced. Let's role play. I don't want to have any money. Uh, that took too long. <laughs> Finally, our instance is now provisioning. I can already taste the sweet summer dew of pina coladas from all the money our duckies are going to make. Well, you know as well as I do. As solutions architects, we do everything by the well-architected framework, which in essence are six commandments laid out by AWS to make us work more efficiently. Phase was fine. Whilst that's provisioning, why don't we just put some configurations into the um, SSM parameter store? And that way, easy to have something to refer to later on, simplifying the whole thing. Happy? Manage our systems by going to the parameter store, do all of this. They're probably worth mentioning that our database will be on the same instance as our app itself, so the endpoint is here on local host. So in here we're defining the database user, database name, the database endpoint, database password, and the root password. Your kneecaps are a privilege, not a right. Strengthen the password, Marco. <sighs> Fine. Please! God damn it! Hate this hacker crap! Phone it. Right, we've got duckies running. Time to install MariaDB through the Session Manager CLI. That's where we put the SQL database into our EC2. We're doing everything manually here, so things are going to take an absolute eternity. And it's going to suck so much if we've got to scale out our instances one at a time because we haven't got a load balancer. And just to show you how long one takes, we'll get time going, starting now. One utility breakdown. This references the parameter store values we just looked at. That way I don't have to kill myself. Okay, delicious updates out the way. Complete! Done! This makes the database and server run on default. Database password. Whoa, WordPress, man. <sighs> I've got an error somewhere, I just don't know. Oh, line one. Why are you telling me this now? Why? Let's see what's going on. Check the words. Oh, no. oh, you see this guy? See this guy? To get serious. He's beginning to believe. About WordPress. Hacker man. Okay, so I think I fixed the issue. Let's put the IP4 in, see if it works. Come on, come on, come on. Great success. Yes, finally. And it only took... Bruh. Way too long. So I hope you can see why we don't provision manually. It takes forever, and I get things wrong. You type like a wet piece of lettuce. Shut up. No, you. WordPress needs attention. Let's give our site a name. Under username, go for admin. Go for a strong password. Duckies. What, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm the second dummy of Jesus Christ. Prove it! And install. NFTs. 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 Jeez. Okay, we're in. Let's go over to our post. We're going to make one just for our duckies. Be gone. Add a new post. This is still in the limelight. So it's time. We're finally going to make the NFT store for our duckies. Let's go ahead and upload them. There we go. Wow. Beautiful. So that's uploading the images to a local image store and storing the metadata for this post in the local MariaDB database. That's two different places that the data is being stored in. The local content store as well as the database. View the post by publishing it. There we go. Well, I really want a Tesla, so I'm going to sell these for a million. A million apiece. Alright, so we've come to the end of the lesson, and that's taken a bloody eternity. We've automated nothing. Slow, annoying, very much the intention today. So the application and database are on the same instance. What's going to happen if they need to scale? Neither can scale without the other. See, the database of the app itself is stored in EC2, which means if we scale in or out, guess what? We're going to risk everything. This is what happens here. Look, the database of the app is stored in this EC2. This content media, the stuff that we care for, our pictures, what happens if we start scaling or populating another subnet, a different AZ, something? Risk it all, gone. As a customer connects directly to that instance, yeah, which prevents us from doing any form of scaling, any automatic healing, any health checks. Also with WordPress, we actually hard coded it into the CLI. EC2s don't have static IPs at the moment. Stop and restart that. We're gonna have a different IP address altogether. We're gonna lose it all. Okay, quick demo. We can see our page is up and running. Our marketplace is good right now. Over to the console. You are terminated. Yeah, go ahead, terminate. Do it. I am the Do Dominator. It. Come on! 
Oh, come on, do it, kill me. What place is done? You've lost the IP address. I know, I should have restarted it, not terminated it. I am stupid. But you get the point, yeah? Like, if I restart this, then we change the IP address. It doesn't point at the same place. The press doesn't know where it is anymore. And my data's gone. Even if we somehow got the web page loading again, all our local content will be stored along with EC2, which is now elsewhere. So it doesn't work. Our architecture has faults, and we see where they are. If you followed this far in the line of the lesson, you, you probably know what I mean. Put down in the prime of their youth. Good night, sweet princess. Good night. And there we go, see? It's all gone. Lost it. I am stupid.